to get let go of my computer because I know it was tapped into when I was in the hospital. So I just didn't even want it anymore. I was scared to have my computer. Right. It's hard. So I decided just to do the 15, there is a 15-minute live video on it. And I figured if I just start coming out and just basically with my basic testimony, and then I want to use my phone as a safeguard, too. I keep multiple devices on me so that when I'm out, I'll have a recording device. Something's recording the people around me. So then if I see a repeat of people being around me, then I know to be a little bit more aware. Yeah. I've gotten, you know, like where I'll get on the bus and I'm like, all right, you know, I need to, I'll get off of the bus. I've gotten, get off the bus and get right back on on the back side of the bus and then realize, well, there's still a couple more of them on here. I'll get back off at the next block and do the same thing. I'm sure right, it's putting right, many right. of them off because. I'll catch back up with them later on in the day. But um, putting, being able to document these things are really hard. And, um, you know, uh, Jamil, it's like if when you said that, you know, I think right. for someone like when you say that you don't have your history up, I think for someone like me who thinks in the back of my head, oh, well, would this be someone who's set a channel up and have these resources in front of their hand in order to bring me out and kill me? It's a legitimate thought that, you know, many of us would end up having over a course of time. I'm right. Not, it's no disrespect to you at all. I think that's what right. you're trying to say. Definitely. But it's and just that, because of our experience, what we've been through, what we've all been through. Yeah. And then on the back end of it, too, by you not having your history up, I'm not saying anything about it. What I'm just trying to get at is I'm glad she even asked the question because it makes me go, Oh, well, you know, what is it that, um, I, there would be tens of thousands of other questions essentially that come with it. And without bringing any type of negativity to the table, but just highlighting on the fact that we all need some type of comfort. I need comfort, put it that way. And yet it's really hard to find comfort in this scenario. As a man, how would you suggest that we as females find comfort in the scenario that not everybody is a part of this beast system. Right, like not, not everybody is a part of stalker trying to hurt us. How would I bring comfort to you and explain that to you? Well, yeah. I mean, for any female, yeah. How would you... A, a targeted individual that, female, yeah. yeah well, you, you know, I, I, I want to be practical here. It depends on how targeted the woman is. There's different levels of targeting. And if somebody is not already participating, they may be converted to participate. They may be approached and paid off, you know. Or, or and have you talked it. to a TI that's been converted and been like, hey, you're a targeted individual, be a gang stalker, so you're not targeted individual well, anymore? They, no, I'm talking about, okay, oh, there, if you're, okay, a woman is being gang stalked and she meets some new people those people may be approached, told disinformation stories about her, and, and asked to participate in what's going the overall networking of what's going on. You I know, I got to be so, realistic. Yeah. I got to be real. I got to be realistic. I don't want to tell somebody something just because it sounds nice. You know, I'm not going to give somebody some fairy tale just because it sounds nice. I don't know what to say about to tell a woman so she feels comfortable or whatever. Like, you know, you just, you got to peep, you got to peep the scene. You know, you got to be smart and peep the scene and you test the waters, you test the people out. You know, you give them little samples of, of what they can get if, they, if they're friends with you and if they fuck up the little sample, then you know not to fuck with them. You know not to kick it with them. You know to stay away from them. You test people out. You got to yeah. keep testing people out. Test test people out and if they pass that test then give them another test if they pass the, but if as they a pass woman it's scary because if they don't pass the test then we could be dead you know what i'm saying i, I mean as well you know it's, woman, not, it's not like it's scary to be in that situation you, you know? know if somebody's gonna if somebody wants to kill you they're gonna kill you yeah that's true <laughs> if somebody you know you and can't walk will. around they will shoot a gun and try and kill you i know that for a fact because they've done it to I me mean, yeah, I know, I know, I hear, but you know, I've I've had people try to kill me in my lifetime. You know, if somebody yeah. wants to kill you, they're gonna. If somebody really wants to kill you, they're gonna kill you. You right. know, mm -hmm. that's just the way it is. No, it, nobody can stop. The presidents have been killed before. It, 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 if they wanted, to, you can be touched. I don't care who you are, 
how much money you got, that's how much cloth yeah. you got, you can be touched. Exactly. And that's how I feel. I mean, you, if it, someone's tried to kill me before, who's not to say that right. you and her are? You, can, you know, I mean, I'm just you being can be touched. You know, I, if, right, they want right. you, if they and, want you. If they want you bad enough, they're going to get you, you know, that you can be touched. So I'm not going to sit up here and give fairy tales to people and stuff like that. You, you, and, But at the same time, you can't go out in the world and be scared and think everybody's trying to kill you everywhere you go. Right, you might end right, because not you everybody's end up a gang stalker. Yeah. Well, you might a attract A lot of people will it. totally try and help you and love you. Not everyone's you a gang stalker, it. but I think a lot of TIs, like, in the beginning, in the confusion stage, they truly believe everyone's a gang stalker because they they don't know, like, and they've been so traumatized that, like, it's just, like, not, like, on guard and think everyone gets them. I think you that's can what attract that, that part of the program is, is that what, that's what they want. So then they don't have to worry about you. You're going to attract it. By walking around, par- by walking around paranoid, you're gonna. By walking around paranoid, you're gonna attract it. I there's been right, people right, who try right. to you're kill You're gonna business. manifest it on your own. Yeah. The power of manifestation. There's motherfuckers. There's people you, who try uh, to kill me. what you believe, you know. Right. There's people who've tried to kill me, and there's people who want me dead. I know that. I don't give a fuck. I'm still out there on blast, 24/7, with my courses. Yeah. Right. You know, shit. If they want me, come get me. Shit, I'm doing my courses. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. My shit's on blast. Go. Every single to the day to the day I yeah. die, my shit is on blast. I don't give a fuck who likes it. To the day I die, my shit is on blast. Courses every day right. for everybody. Everywhere. I think just right. any so, TI you know, woman, you gotta like watch out so, like and test the water, like you were saying. But you gotta be careful, locked and loaded. Right. Just in case. Right. Not paranoid, right. but prepared. Yeah. My shit till I prepared. drop. God damn it, till I. Till I till I till I drop, goddamn it! I'm doing six hour interviews in this bitch. Till I drop, I'm doing six hour interviews. I don't give a fuck who likes it. So yeah. so you know that's just how it is. With, that's just how it is with me. That's how I'm laying. But I you know I don't know. You know you just gotta test the waters, see what yeah. works. I, find, I guess it's find harder for a female to test the waters than it than it is for like somebody like you, like a you know a strong like big dude like. You know, I mean, I'm like five foot tall, ninety pounds, <laughs> tiny. But my God, but see, they don't know who my God it, is. It's though. a little different, but I mean, I still test the water just because of everything I've been through. I just don't care anymore. Like, if you're gonna kill me, it's not me. It's my God. Me, whatever. It's not but, me. Yeah, it's my God. For other TI women, like I could see how it's really, really hard for them to trust a man or anybody in general. Do you know what I'm saying? After what we've been through. It's my God doing it, though. It's not me. It's my God doing it. Right. Totally. Yeah, you got to have a lot of faith and not fear, like we were talking about earlier, you know? Right. My God's doing it. That's my God doing it. I know what my God can do. You know, my God's out there with me. That's why I'm not worried about nothing. My God, and my God doesn't care who they are. They They can't touch, they can't outrank my God. So, I guess I've you know, even been fooled as an empath and, an, an, you know, I'm an indigo. I, I'm i very intuitive and empathic person, but I've still been fooled by gang mm-hmm. stalkers, you know? Yeah, I've been <laughs> as fooled. As empathic as I am, I've still been fooled and I've still been hurt deeply on mm-hmm. different levels, different domains. So, yeah, it definitely, I have, a, um, I have really bad trust issues and, and uh, I don't, I don't trust anybody. And I have abandonment issues, like or abandonment issues. Like I'm scared, like people will leave me, you know. And I've had that my whole life. That's been a hard thing for me to to deal with. Like now that I'm living on my own, I, I guess I'm forced to deal with it, you know. Well, you better God than me. Put me in a I place where I have to deal with it. <laughs> Yeah, I can't live on my. I just, I. That's the one thing I actually. I think. I used I to think the same thing. I fear anything. I. That was probably. That's probably one. Of, not my biggest fear, but if I it's would a big fear, fear yeah. anything, it is. That is the one thing that I do fear. I don't mind being alone by myself every now and then. And but not I every day. I'm by start. myself ninety percent of my life. I mean. Yeah, it's like once I have my dogs, that, and you know, like. <laughs> I live alone. I spend most of my time alone. 
I and feel I, like I, I don't have heal. to be awake when people are asleep so that I know I can I can sense when someone's just looking at me. I'll it wake up from up. a dead sleep in the middle of the night. You gotta be hardcore. You you just gotta yeah. have it in your mind. You just yeah. gotta have it in your mind that it, that it is all or it's all or nothing. It's whatever. Yeah. You just gotta yeah. I, yeah. I, I've been see. I've been through so much stuff. I'm telling you. You're talking about somebody who 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 who, who motherfucking life attempts on my life. I've survived it. I've survived attempts on my life. I've survived involuntarily psychiatric units. Motherfucking had my food drug, electronic weapons, sophisticated stalking, mind control, mind control. I've survived it. These other motherfuckers can't survive it. They can't go through what I went through. They would have been dead a long time ago. You know, right. you, you just got to be Unfortunately, hardcore. a lot of TIs have died. And that's a really sad reality. Hardcore. But it's true. It's so sad to think about how many of us haven't yeah. survived. You know, a lot right. of us have died. They've what killed is, so what many part of the TIs. System, what part of the system, Jamil, were you um, speaking out against? Huh? What part of the system was your focus? The 60s, I was speaking about, the, the, I, was spe- I was telling people about things that had happened in the 60s and 70s that were covered up. What, like were talking, he's talking Kennedy's time, like with John Wilkes. Yeah, Bush, the Nazi Bush. Yeah, Operation Paperclip, the Nazis coming oh, into America. Yeah. Yeah. There's okay. things I know. Yeah, there's things that I know that the Nazis were involved with, and there's people who know I know, yeah. you know. And, but, My dad, you know, I call there's, Hitler. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, he's a there's a lot German. of stuff I know about that they don't want out there. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, um, I, you know. That's interesting. So Have you had a YouTube channel for a long time, Jamil? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I heard how, what, how long did you have the other yeah, one? Yeah, I heard what you said, but what was your other, so how old was your oldest one? I'm trying to think. I think I may, I don't know. I, I, I almost feel out, like I've seen your name. I came out, yeah, I came out in late 2014 with a YouTube channel. It was just my name, Jamil Rawls, and then I just came on there talking about I just yeah. came on there talking about, you know, my conspiracy research. You Is know, your I last was doing, name spelled R A W L S. Yeah, R L S, like Lou Rawls. I just came on I there watched with myself. The, I've watched some of your. I may, if you got one to, well, no, because you've erased your channel, and there was a bunch of videos erased off of my blog. Well, that were erased off of YouTube, anyways. And I almost want to say there was a mind control video I think you had. Um, what was it, it was about? Over, oh my goodness! It covered. Um, I want to say it could have been about like Britney Spears was a sex sex slave. Oh yeah, um, she's got beta programming like me. Right, I think it was, and don't get me wrong, because it was a long video, like an hour or so long, and mm-hmm. it it covered most topics. I think, it, matter of fact, I almost remember the um the the um what do you call it the picture that you know was your thumbnail. Okay, your thumbnail um would have been a brain, and it was just the brain. It was. Blue screen, just the brain and the title. No, that, MK that doesn't sound like mind my... control. No, okay, okay, but no, I've seen like your name before. Um, I've never heard to... of another Jamil. That's a, a unique name. So yeah, uh, I recall the last name wrong. My stuff was. I did a lot of work on. I did a lot of work on Jonestown and um, things that people don't remember from the seventies, like the zebra mm-hmm. murders, the D Mau Mau murders. Uh, the son of Sam, the Zodiac, but Jonestown, the Manson, the Manson, Manson and Jonestown were on top of my list, on my priority list. Jonestown became a priority for me. And, I don't know you about know, that. Did, You'll have to school me one day. I did. Yeah, yeah and I watched Jonestown the. Went, I used the mind control. The mind control operation in Jonestown went till 1985. A lot of people I don't, don't know, know about this. that. He's from Jonestown, Indiana, where I'm from. Jones, oh, yeah, really? Jim Jones is from. Yeah, Jim Jones is from Lynn, Indiana. Yeah, and in 1978, Congressman Leo Ryan was murdered. He was assassinated. And um, after after that time, Jonestown still, the NBC News 
our, the NBC News crew went back to Jonestown a year later, November 18th, 1979, one year later, and there were still people in Jonestown hanging out, walking around. Jonestown went until 85. Most people just don't know that. But it wasn't wow. mind control. I didn't know that. Lot, oh, yeah. Assassination programs, were, but all kinds of stuff. There's a lot I know about jo- Jim Jones, the People's Temple, our, the, our, I, can, I will say the Jim Joneses. There was more than one Jim Jones. And I don't want to consume this thing about it, but there's a lot I know about Jonestown. And there was a lot I, was okay. putting, I put together on the subject. And, yeah, Project Paperclip, there's a lot of other things involved with it. You know, and so, I know about Project Paperclip, but I don't know about this. But thing. it's not, a, yeah, you can lose your, you, you can lose your life playing with that. You can, I mean, I wasn't playing with oh, it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. But you can yeah, lose your life over that. So you, you, yeah, you can, there's, it, right now in 2018, you can lose your life over something that happened 50 fucking years ago. It's not hard to do. Well, yeah, if you right. talk about it, right? Right, yes. Yeah, God but, forbid. No, there's people, there's still people you can lose that your life over that stuff. That you know? have, yeah, money. Oh. I mean, you know what? That's one thing I was going to say. I've always learned if you want to be a truther, that's amazing. You want to cover things. And at this point, I think so much of, has come out anymore over all of these topics. Someone said something to me about, well, what would your goal be? Because I've even begun writing on it. I've uh, I'm actually been in the editing process of this for like a month now. Um, I wish I could move faster mentally, but not been able to do so nonetheless. And I, I first started out with names, and I was, you know, pinpointing people and use, and using the fact that I knew symbology and the, what the what their hand signs and gestures and all these different things meant. And then um, I was including that in my writing, and I came to find that that wasn't very smart that just, you know, by pinpointing the ideas and showing how it has integrated into society on the lower level and not really utilizing people's names, I'm creating a cushion for myself that says, well, nobody's really going to come after me because I'm not pinpointing drug cartels and, you know. Right, right. You're not naming names. Right, right. So... You know, I found that that kind of, that made me feel more comfortable. I'm still not done writing this piece. But um, I think, you know, even when I when I decide to get, put my pedal to the metal and start recording myself um, and giving my testimony, I still wouldn't even want to do that. Because even though it's kind of smart to to air out the closet, per se, and say so many things, at some point, it's really not that smart, because they can wipe all your accounts out. They can oh, yeah. easily... Oh, yeah, in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you'll really? be lucky if you get them back. Well, but the really? point is, if they decide if they decide to create a life, a fictitious life that you've been living, and then go murder 15 people, and then holographically make you show up, trust me, it's possible. You don't have to be present. They can easily arrest you afterwards and just say, yes, you were there, because that's oh, yeah. how they, they can just totally falsely accuse you and do whatever they want. It's right. fucked up. 15 people died in your name, and, you know, then all of a sudden you've got 10 years' worth of accounts that have a bunch of bullshit right. of crap that you never even put your hands in. So, you know. Yeah, that's scary. It's a, it's a very, very, very large um, op threat to our society but on a on a lower level when you're dealing with people who have been gang stalked do you find that the ones that have been gang stalked for have you found a lot of people that would prefer to be silent and say absolutely nothing and let it continue to happen yeah what do you say <laughs> you must be busy <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he heard. <laughs> hey, do, you, do you think that there's people that don't want to talk? You know that, that they do. A lot of people that just people? want to be silent. They're scared. Yes, for I mean obvious reasons too. I don't blame them. Right. Have you found that though? Like that a lot of people yeah. don't want to talk about it. There's a woman right yeah. now who emailed me with her phone number, and I text her back, and she keeps saying she's going to call me, and she never does, and she, I, she, I know she's scared. She, she's scared yeah. to talk on the phone about it. Right. Well, I get that, though. I totally get that. 
and if it's just beginning, you know, like I'm surprised, um, <laughs> you know, Rachel just found out about this and she's so, you know, like, uh, you know, has the courage to talk about it. Cause I think a lot of people in that stage are scared shitless. Oh, I'm scared. Like I'm terrified. I thought like, I, I thought well, I'm you are awesome. I'm glad you do. What? I said I'm glad you do talk out. Like I think that's awesome of you, cause and in the stage you're at, where you just found out, like most people would never fucking talk about that shit. They'd be too scared. I did hold off for like a day or two, I think. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I give you mad props for, you know, just finding out mm-hmm. about this. Because I think, Rachel, like, if I were you and I just found out, I'd be scared, too. I probably wouldn't have done it. So that's really so Rachel, cool that you have the courage and strength oh, to do I that. Was so sick of, I was just so sick of not knowing what was going on. I was just so sick of not knowing what was going on and being so confused and so isolated that, um, I actually was really, really hesitant, and then I saw like a couple of videos, and one of them was Jamal saying, "Well, what's the worst they can do now? Like your life's already shitty. Like if you're gonna have a chance to like make it better, so what if they crank it up a little bit, you know?" And so I just kind right, of right. got a leap of faith, you know. Then we turn it did. up. We crank it up. And exactly. They crank it up. I can see why somebody would be scared. You know what I'm saying? to talk they about it because they'd be scared they're going to be more gang stopped and they're going to get more voice to call they're going to get more of these electronic harassments you know like gonna, I, get it. Gonna, I get it I get it there's going to be more education on it too so. you're right you know what I'm saying I'd like to you know, know what however, Rachel's however story however high you turn it up is however high you got to turn it up you know Just. but it is hard at first I mean I totally give you props, Rachel, for, like, being courageous Rachel, and strong enough know? to do that. I'm sorry. Rachel, how long have you, how long have you, I don't know much of your story, so what, when did you find out? When did you begin to notice these things? When did this, when do you believe this started happening? Uh, well, I just found out about gene stalking about two weeks ago, but I've been going through it for about four years. What turned you on to what was happening? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still here. What turned you on to what was happening, Rachel? Rachel? Is she still on here? Did we lose her? Oh, no. No, she's still on here. Okay. It's just, on the computer, it's saying she's still on here. Can you hear us, Rachel? Oh, shit. I guess they're trying to fuck with us. I don't know. Isn't that interesting? I, it happened with me earlier. Now it's happening to her. Yeah. That's what they do. Doesn't surprise me. They're going one by one. That means the meal, you're next. (laughs) (laughs) Right? You're next. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, mad props on Rachel because she just found out about two weeks ago. So could you only imagine? You remember when you just found out, like, you're a gang stalk? Like, I would have not had the courage to talk about it because I was still thinking I was crazy and losing my mind. And, <laughs> yeah, I would have been way too scared, I think. So I really think uh, Kylie just, for, for being able to do that. Like, I think that's awesome. Yeah, I just texted her, so, you know, she should be coming on. But man, we okay. So this we this some groundbreaking stuff we got. Now we got we got two hours and twenty eight minutes on here. Um, 
I was gonna say Is there any way that you can break it up? That's one thing. Like I love listening to you, but some of them are so long, like I'd have A D D like I cannot like pay attention for that long. Is there any way you can like break it up kind of? Yeah, I'll break this one up then. This one's okay. two and a half hours. Cool. Yeah, because that's you know, a really long time for me to listen to a video. And yeah, I'm sure yeah, your viewers yeah. too. Okay, you're the second person that's told me that it's, it's kind of intimidating to go on there and see like three hours and you're just like, fuck, I got to listen to three hours. You know well, I'm yeah, saying? it's just a lot. You know what I'm saying? You know, like. So hold on and let me get this right then. You're actually on live video right now on YouTube. What do you is mean? That, uh, you're saying that this is live feed for other people to listen in, essentially. Yes. Okay. Th- well, then, yeah, well, great. I, if, you know, I, I like to, um, I'd like to say something then. Um, one of my most scariest experiences, uh, I, I caused myself to break my ankle. I jumped into the L.A. watch, and it definitely was a very, very scary experience. Um, and I was really confused afterwards. I was I was really going through a lot of emotions because I'm, you know, just a single female. Who, um, I had no body at the end of the day. And um, although I knew what was happening around me was a very real situation, Everyone else around me portrayed, you know, the like that I was living a different life in a different world that didn't even exist here on Earth. Mm-hmm. And um, when you're in the in the midst of all of those things, I did not find comfort from my neighbors. I didn't find comfort from my family. I only found comfort in prayer. And yeah, I also found too. that it was my best weapon. You know, my tool was prayer. Prayer is a powerful tool. Prayer is a very yes. powerful tool. And and I I have to be honest. I take a prayer to a gunfight. You know, and I I want to say that because I think this is important for people to understand that spiritual warfare is real. And very we real. About, we talked about this earlier, Jamil, where you were saying, you know, this has a tendency to lean lean towards being demonic. It is. And yeah. but it's evil. Um, it's demonic. It's of a Jezebel spirit. But. Yeah. And and there's more to that. But the the point of it all for an individual who wants to come out of this or to feel like they have like minded people and to be able to find comfort I don't think there's anything that I or anyone else, any one of us on the phone could say that could that, provide that comfort. Oh, hey. Is that um, Rachel? But, I fixed it. Okay. So, I'm glad you're back. Finish. Yeah, I'm glad you're back too, but finish up really quick. I was, I just wanted to make note that if anyone out there, you know, is or has been able to spend time through this video and listen to even break it up through pieces. One thing I want to share is, you know, understand that even though, you know, you it looks like you're alone, even though it feels like you're alone, you're not alone. And ultimately yeah, you're not. there are those moments that are very crazy, they're very hectic and it's very confusing. You don't know what's going on and you, you want to be normal. You want to live that normal life and live it's all possible. You can't give in to your enemy. You just have to take it in prayer because that is the ultimate. That's the that's the best tool. That's the best and weapon, you're right. Yeah, there's definitely been a sense of unity, uh, since I reached out and that's nice because yeah, I haven't trusted anyone for years. Well, we didn't get a finish, and you tell about your, you know, what made you realize, because you said you've been saying talk for four years, so if for four years this has been going on, but you didn't figure out until two weeks ago, 
give me, you know, a little um, view of the way you were seeing things for the last four years, and then what brought that to light for you? Well, actually, I think that they, so as in the people behind the gang stalking, I think they wanted me to find out because they sent someone to me who just showed me the videos. So you think that they wanted you to know you are being gang stalked? Yeah, because they, if, because you won't know unless they want you to, pretty much. Because then comes the next, then comes the next stage. Like after you're made aware, then then comes the sensitization stage, and they keep going with it. At least that's my understanding. Like, how did you feel when you realized that you were a gang stop? Oh, I had a freaking mental breakdown because I thought my, because I figured out my family is in on it. Yeah, that's the hardest, right? The, to realize that your own family is betraying you. Yeah, and so, like, yeah, I was, like, so relieved because, like, I had watched so many videos and researched so many things trying to figure out what this was. Like, at first, I thought, like, I was just a part of a behavior modification um, study that I was involuntarily, like, put on. I thought I was, like, it was an alternative type of, like, drug rehab. I thought I was, like, a victim of a government experiment. I thought all kinds of crazy things. I was researching everything. And when I watched the videos on gaslighting and gang stalking, I'm like, this is it. Like, no doubt, this is Yeah, it. you just knew. You just knew that was what's going on. That's how I felt, too, when I realized it. Well, how did you guys figure it out? I actually found out because I love scripture. And I was research. Oh, well, no, Derek Prince, he did. He is someone that delivered the word and truth and wholeness. And so I was a spiritual leader. He, he may he um, rest in peace for the time being. And I can't wait to meet him in heaven because um, one of the sermons that he, that I would listen to, still listen to, um, I went back to it and it's titled Demon Gang. And he goes into a spiritual breakdown of the way demon gangs operate. And, um, that my, so my search term was demon gangs. I initially. Oh, wow. Believed, I've never even searched that. I initially believed that it was. It's a, um, I believe it's a spiritual thing. Either you're rooted in the or you're not. And if, like, for instance, um, you know, the more that the, the uh, dark powers of the world permeate our earth, the more that people are demonized. So, you know, you've got people running around naked and, you know, crawling up walls and shot in the face and looking like a demon and you know, running around all over the internet, and I, I couldn't help but to think that I'll get out in public and people will look at me and wink their eye and put their tongue out at me and smile and laugh at me like they were mocking me, but these people didn't even know me, and so I would say to them, why did you just do that? I'm like, why did you just and smile and stick your tongue out at me? That was odd. Do you know me? And they're like, I didn't do that. And, but I've also do know that that's also, a, you know, it's biblical. It says, why do you wink your, you know, um, wink with one eye and, and stick your tongue out. It talks about children of, you know, of darkness, essentially, children of perdition. So because of Bible scripture, I was introduced to the idea that people were actually just being used as vessels for demons. And yeah, more, the, there's portals open for these demons to come into people. Yes, yes. So I just kind of leaned for that. And then when I realized, wait a minute, there's terminology for gang stalking, I went into it. And what I've seen was some bad episodes that I even had where the one girl was running around just crazy to the postal guy. Look, he's following me. Don't you be following me. And the guy's looking at her going, what? <laughs> but and she's recording him, but, you know, and I can't help but thinking a bit of being her in that position at that time. And then and then I can't help but 
being the one who thinks at, on the other side, this girl looks nuts, <laughs> you know? What is she trying to prove? So I, I get into it that way, and then I went, you know what? Wait a minute. So I stepped back, and when I did, I was introduced to another gentleman. I do not recall his name. Um, he broke it down, and he started talking about how Basically, they were demon gangs. So what I was finding was that, you know, there was a Holy Spirit anointed message that had come through and said, um, you know, this is real, but it doesn't help that you've been traumatized and tormented so much as a people that when you do drugs, you get high, you drink, then you begin to act a fool and you look stupid and, you know, it, it doesn't bring light to the situation. It just makes you look that much more of a maniac. So um, I kind of put it all together, and then, boom, Shamil's channel popped out of me after about two or three more crap videos of people saying they were paid ops. I didn't believe they were true. I've experienced it so much that, you know, and Shamil had more of an approach so gang stalking, the way he described it, um, put a nail in the coffin. Wait a minute, his opening words were yes, you know, this was something that yes, I knew I could label it for sure, for sure, gang stalking. And um, at the same time, um, what took me to it again was just researching demon possession, basically demon gangs, and then the fact that it's I've I've had demon gangs running around me for ages. I just didn't realize that it was an organized um, um, setup, like it is. It's it's actually quite boring. I think this is a a demon kind of like what you have researched. I do believe gang stalkers are demons. They have the Jezebel spirit, like the Bible speaks of. So that makes a lot of sense. Right. That, that would be how you would um, have acknowledged what was going on, especially because you're such a spiritual, godly woman. But Rachel, what was your? Because I, I, I heard, I didn't catch most of your story, really. Um, you know, you said four years. What were your signs? How can you pinpoint the people that are um, have have targeted you? Um. Well, like the first couple of years are very very subtle. Like my computers and my phones were being hacked, and um, I was informed my identity got stolen. And every now and then I would hear like you know voices that didn't seem like they would be coming from anywhere especially like when under dates about the stress and so that's yeah. why I talked it up to maybe I have like a mental illness or something but that was it because um, like one time like this was a while ago I had come into work I worked in a kitchen at this point in time I had come into work hungover and my boss was out, it was just me and my boss in the store, or at the store at this point in time, and he was outside doing a parking lot check when I heard a voice that sounded similar to his saying, oh, it looks like someone partied a little hard last night, but he was outside, so obviously he couldn't have said that to me. And just little things like that. And then he got really, really intense, like about a year ago where like the voices were constantly following me and people were like talking about me whispering on the buses wherever I went and I started seeing the same people everywhere I went and then when my family started acting really strange that's when I knew something was weird. Not think that your family's level of involvement or that they were you know actually because I, I wonder, are you for sure that they were actually pitted against you and like some scheme or plot or and to target you in that manner or was or do you think that it was, you know, they were maybe um, just spiritually coming at you without not really realizing that they're coming at you in a, in a foul manner spiritually? Oh, I think they were actually approached and given misinformation. Um, I think they thought they had joined an Al-Anon program, 
that taught them how to be, essentially gaslight me, and they think that it's like a new age way of supporting an addict through tough love. Al-Anon is one way that they program, just like AA and any other um, uh, anonymous program. Yeah, that I makes a lot of sense to me, Rachel. Yeah, so they think they're just being supportive and setting boundaries when really they're just being assholes. Well, I mean, it teaches them the narcissistic game plan, which is the gaslighting game plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, your family is tricked into gang stalking you. That's so yeah, atypical. Yeah, because they're being helpful. Right, and swore they were being helpful. Yes, yes. Hmm. Do you really think that they were trying to be helpful, or do you think that they've always been a part of it? I'm trying to sort that one out. I'm not and sure yet. Do you, do you right, think that, that is hard. Do they get money or anything for doing this? I mean, do you think there's some sort of monetary compensation? I don't know. I I'm still I'm still trying to piece together my whole family thing. All I know is like they are not who they used to be anymore. So did they used to be supportive of you and now they've kind of turned and became stalkers? Yeah. Okay. This almost like a typical for I'm on a lot of platforms talking and this sounds really typical of things that people are experiencing just really on a spiritual level. You know, I'm finding the way we're talking we're we're talking here that it's become now most people are in the same battle. It's like, oh, then people are not even the same anymore. They don't seem like my family. You know, there's this vast difference between the two. Um, was this for night change, or was this something that, you know, you've seen get worse over time, and it was almost as if your family was indoctrinated into it? I've been through the Al-Anon, actually, because that is a part of programming. They could have programmed her family to Al-Anon. When you say programming, which one of us know anything about any type of programming that they would use? I, I don't, so I wonder, do any of you know? What's this oh, V2K stuff? I, the Voice of Skull? Actually, Rachel knows a lot about Voice of Skull. Yeah, what is that about? Does that have something to do with the the... The programming, I mean, I, I, I'm not really educated on the programming part outside of like... They make chaos. you hear voices. It's, it's psychotronic heard... weaponry. They, 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 they simulate voices through sound, and they, they actually use remote neural monitoring, too. They can, mess with, they can make you hear things like that or make you think you're hearing things that mess with your mind. But uh, voice of skull, is they're projecting a sound at you. They're projecting some sort of uh, radiation frequency. And I think they say, you know, especially like, it's like they know what you're, they'll look at circumstances, things about you, and they'll be projecting voices at you that are similar to what you're going through in your life, sort of. And they'll be making comments on stuff, whatnot. I've never actually had voice to skull where I've heard the voices, but I've had some dreams that I know were tampered with somehow. But I've met dozens of people who have actually experienced voice to skull. And Anthony Sutton came out with some groundbreaking work on how the Soviets were using psychotronic weapon in Vietnam, Vietnam to make people hear voices. There's a newspaper article, um, uh, Carmen, I can send you of, that back in 1974, psychologists released official documentation on how they had technology was making people hear voices back in 74. Uh, you know, this, this is well, like this, this isn't just like conspiracy theories or anything like that. Like this is documented stuff that, that right, the so government's I've been experimenting. I've heard my name called like Carmen, you know, Carmen, and it was an audible Carmen, but nobody was around. Would you say that's the same? Yeah. What do you think, Rachel? start. So Rachel, what is your extent, your your knowledge of it? What, how has it affected you? Can you give me some examples? I'd love to hear them. 
Oh, I have like a 24-hour narration in my head. They impersonate people that I know. And basically, like, they sit there and nitpick every decision that I'm going to make, that I just made. Uh, they, and they, they say horrible things about me all day. Like, they're like, you're a nasty bitch. You only washed your hands five times today. Just shit like that. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, and you... That's got to be hard to deal with. I couldn't imagine. Yes, and if you're having a conversation with someone, they sit there and say, that person's lying. Don't you remember when they said this last time? And they, like, 50% of the time, that person did say that. 50% of the time, I'm like, wait, no, they never said that. Shut the fuck up, you know? I've had that same problem at times, and you know what's funny is, I kind of thought I was just a little nuts, of course. That's what I always would chalk it up to is the fact that I'm just going crazy. And um, You're not. You're not going crazy. <laughs> They're psychologically abusing you and using voice of skull technology. Well, that's, it, that's pretty intense because I have thought myself and I've went, you know what, I'm turning the radio on because I'm tired of listening to you, but I'm talking to myself. Nothing works. Earplugs don't work. Music doesn't work. They infiltrate through white noise sometimes. Do crazy things happen, Rachel, when you're, like, near the uh, radio? Like, does it, like, just act kind of crazy and stuff? No, I haven't experienced it, but I know what you're talking about. That does happen to me. Like, I'll go next to a radio, and I'll be jamming to a song, and then it just completely just goes... Yeah, um, I've had that problem too, or I have it so that where if the radio won't get a radio station, that uh-huh. I go stand, I go stand next to the antenna, the radio station will work. But if I right. move around, yeah, that happens to me. Yeah, depending on where I'm at is whether the station will come in or not. And also something else I've noticed about myself, I can go, places. I can call places too, like I'm paying a bill or something on the phone. And the, the operator on the other end will say, hold on, I'm sorry, I'm having a computer glitch. It went out. And, I mean, I have that so much. I'll go to the grocery store, and the checkout lady will say, I don't know what just happened. but Oh, my God, I've heard that so many times, and it takes forever to actually just purchase something. Right. And then I've had another instance that I thought was even weirder. My sister and I went to a beauty salon. The lady was all nice and everything with my sister. Every time she looked at me, she had a really funny look on her face. But it wasn't, it didn't look mean or nothing. It just looked kind of funny. Like she couldn't register something when she was looking at me. But when we, my sister was checking out, her and the lady were talking. And the lady turned around and at the, it was simultaneously, the lady went to the computer to hang it up, and I was walking up, and as soon as I got there, basically the lady looked back up and took the money. And in the process, of course, she had just looked at the computer screen, and when my sister said something back to her, the woman came back with a really sharp tongue at her and was really mad. So my sister, I had always said, you know, look, people act funny when they're around me anyway. So I I tried to bring that up. Oh, yeah, don't worry. It always happens when I'm around. And my sister wanted to talk it up. And what she said, though, that I thought was interesting was, I wonder what she's seen on that computer screen. Almost as if the computer was may have programmed something in her, you know, like when she looked at it. So I had to think about that, like, wait a minute. You know, I've had so many instances where the computers have went out. Do you find that you have that? I've been called eclectic off of it. I've been given an eccentric name, and I am Miss Eclectic because I can shut down computers and, you know, my phones like to fly out of my hand and, you know, weird things. Um, Do the lights go like on and off kind of? Flicker around me a lot, yes. Do that too, most definitely. That happens sometimes. That's interesting. Hey Rachel. Yeah. Did you ever did you ever get that did you ever see what I was talking about about the confusion stage on those links on the about me section? Oh, I haven't read it yet. 
Okay. You have it. Okay. Are you able to get, Jamil, are you able to get uh, a uh, copy of anything? I don't know if I can email you while I'm on the line. If not, I can go, go off the mm-hmm. this paper uh, of the young lady that I had um, gotten a hold of that maybe you could put it up on the board. And there was a few things that she pinpointed about gang stalkers and whatnot. Um, I almost wonder if there's some topics in there that we've all not managed to touch on yet that other people are experiencing and that maybe we do know something about it but, you know, haven't just haven't touched on it. Is it possible for me to send you that and then for you to show it or I mean let me let me have a look at let me take a look at it. Just send it to you know, email it to me. If I disconnect, I will reconnect here shortly. Who else? Is, okay, who's all on the phone? Andrea, are you, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm okay, just listening um, to you guys. Yeah, did you did you see that article on my YouTube channel in the About Me section? I got a bunch of stuff. It talks. I'm gonna look at it right now about the confusion stage. Um, color sensitization. Okay, I got an article um, about why, like, people funding stalking education, steps to beat gang stalking, women being gang stalked, educational reach out program. No, um, I'll have to take a look. The, the confusion stage, color harassment, stalking, education. Do you guys ever stalking. see people in camo all the time? Like, or lime Camouflage? green or lime yellow? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that. I feel like a lot of my gang stalkers wear camo, and well, you know, if they're not wearing the suits like I told you about, like the higher up ones, they'll do the uh, camo right. or lime green or yellow or the red. Right. Right. I guess I don't know. Like I think with the camo, it's like military stalking, military intelligence telling me they're watching me. And even when I was in uh, the mental hospital, like all the people there were PTSD vets, you know, and military intelligence. And one of them, he straight up told me, he's like, I'll be seeing you again. Like, I'm going to have to save you, and I've got your back kind of thing. Like, told me that. And I believed him. He also told me that he was a stripper and that uh, he – did a like a strip thing for Obama and Obama's like kind of into that occult and uh yeah, that kind of lifestyle. I believe it. Yeah, I've noticed that like recently there's a lot of uh, my gang stalkers wearing camo. And I think it's the military intelligence, like the military gang stalking. But some of them are good, like, looking out for us, and some of them aren't. And I've noticed that, that, like, from all the people I met in there, because most of them, like I said, were military intelligence, getting electric shock therapy. They're still doing that to this day and zapping our military's brains. And I saw the before and after, and let me tell you, it was traumatizing watching that because these guys had PTSD, and they, you know, they literally came back as vegetables and didn't know what happened to them and remembered nothing. And it was really, really like out of a sci-fi, you know, like I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Well, you know, um, but it's really happening. Our military is under uh suicide programming, uh super soldier programming. And that's how they continue to program them under mind control. They do, and for them to not remember, they'll do the electric shock therapy, just like Operation Paperclip. They're still doing that to this day, and I know that for a fact. I'd love to read this um, piece that would actually cover um, military tactics, and I had just came across it really quick, and I think this is really important. Um, It says here, uh, the work discusses how to detect, detect police 
fight in the flesh, in their vehicles, and how to observe their tactics, as well as a historical perspective on the use of spies. It's also very critical of community policing groups like Cellular on Patrol and the alumni of the FBI's National Citizens Academy who practice harassment tactics against American citizens, sometimes to the point where their victims commit suicide. It also goes on to state that the goals of these terrorist harassment tactics is not to disrupt criminal behavior or even public disorder, but to disrupt activities of daily living, such as going to work or to the gym and life processes, such as eating and sleeping. This essentially is a slow execution and it leaves no traces of evidence. I can guarantee you that every police agency that has a covert apparatus large enough to carry this out uses these tactics on whoever they choose to target. While every city and town in the U.S. has adopted this system, this will be carried on much more aggressively in big cities. This includes Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. This creepy expose contains lots of photography taken by, um, let me look here, who the, the author is. Um, it's titled, How to Detect Infiltrators and Observe Covert Police Misconduct. It is listed on subscribe, that's spelled, um, I'd like to give proper shout out. Uh, that's www.s, B as in cat, R as in Randy, I, D as in baby, D as in David, dot com. Um, again, it was titled How to Detect Infiltrators, <laughs> Police, um, and uh, Observe Covert, Covert Police Misconduct. I'm sorry, let me say that again. How do you, how to detect <laughs> and observe covert police misconduct? They go on in here in the table of contents, and it, it talks about um, what's covered: the how to spot their people, how to spot their vehicles, how to spot their tactics, the role of community policing groups, the um, vig vigilantism. Um, the use of spies, it goes into the ec echelon of it, um, police weapons of terror, and then also the neighborhood policy. Um, so, and then it lists these different organizations who actually are overseeing the policy within, you know, different communities. So, um, one of the things that I, and the reason why I wanted to list this and even brought it out, you just mentioned, but I think this is important because what you mentioned is um, uniform to what is being explained in here. They talk about baseball caps. Um, yeah. You know, I yes. They, baseball um, caps and um, the, the sunglasses with the cameras and yeah the camo or red or lime green or yellow red, yeah. uh, yellow and like that lime yellow color you're saying lime green or whatever and you know it, it this gives a depiction of this like uh, it says shirts jackets hats and from specific sports teams such as in los angeles the la raiders and so then in, you know um texas longhorns Texas, the Spurs, you know, the Dallas Cowboys. So, and you may find people in Dallas are experienced the Dallas thing. Cowboys where you're... Okay, okay, I got what you're saying. The military. So hey, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have somebody else. Somebody else is coming in. Emily, uh, Emily uh, I'm here. Emily? Are you there, Emily? Yep. Hi. Hey. Okay, everybody. Hi, Emily. Hey, Hi there. Um, right? Emily, we have Rachel, Andrea, and Carmen, right? Carmen, you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Okay. Well, I'm still mind-boggled and shocked and kind of speechless on just what you read. Yeah, and I don't I even know what to say about that, that, really. I'm going to have to, like, um, <laughs> analyze that after we talk. Well, here's the funny part. You were talking about the military 
the the where and you know right. how when you've had your light. I've talked about hand signaling, and then you've got uh, you have uh, Rachel who's dealt with the the voices and whatnot. Mm -hmm. The voice of skull technology. Yeah, so in here, it actually goes, oh, it, it puts them into each category, and it makes wow. sense. Wow, it, it does. The beginning, the beginning of, the, um, of it, again, what it does is it basically states, you know, and let me read this from here so that, so that there yeah. is a particular or a overall understanding. The, um, it says here, under the shroud of community policing, the U.S. has been transformed into a totalitarian police state without a vote and without warning. We now live in a society saturated with police spies. This makes us all prisoners, and the prisoner's dilemma, the only game in town. This is not a lie, certainly not one worth preserving and certainly not one worth fighting for. The U.S. has also been instrumental in exporting this system globally. My goal in providing this information is to help you detect and be able to bear witness to police harassment and other forms of police misconduct, our police and their civilian partners, I like how that's worded, civilian partners have never behaved more criminally and are especially likely to do so when under the cloak of anonymity. Learn to observe so you can be the judge. So it's important essentially not to say, you know what, they're seeing um, camo, and so now that everybody I see in camo, I'm going to be leery of. Everybody has a <laughs> everybody has a different um, a, a tag, tactic being used on them. So it's but, you know, important. the awakened vets are the ones that will save your life. There are some good ones that are, like, helping us out. I promise you that, that know what's going on. Right. It's the awakened vets. And it's usually the ones that are homeless and disabled, and that's the truth. So, Emily, we've gotten to hear everybody else's story, and you just came in. I'm Carmen. Hi, I'm Emily. Um, I guess I didn't get, uh, what were you just reading? <laughs> okay, again, I'll share that. Um, it, it was listed on Scrib, I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's www.scrib, as in boy, d as in David, dot com. Mm -hmm. It's entitled, how to detect infiltrators and observe covert police misconduct. It's the crimes of cellular on patrol. Um, I can I can even list list that. Let me list the ISD um, and for the author. I do not know who the author is, but in all tributes to them, the ISDN number is one four five three six three eight four eight two, and this publication has some really good information that I think all of us should, you know, definitely anyone that's experiencing these things definitely needs to read this in whole and understand that everybody's story is different and unique to their own situation. But this gives an entire, um, it puts it in perspective and gives you the ability to say, oh, okay, you know what, hats and, and glasses or or yeah, it it just gives us the ability to be more aware of what's in our surroundings, what really to look for, and what not to look for. So okay, just, yeah, I'll have to look in on that. I kind of came in right in the middle of you reading it, so. Well, there is an awesome statement. A couple of them that I'll go ahead and just for the likes of everything. It talks about how to spot vehicles. It talks about clothing. It also talks about hand gestures, um, and, and and it goes in depth. And there's some um, pic pictures. So there's also a little um, pictorial taking place at the same time. Um, uh -huh. I dealt with the talking hands, and it talks. You know, the talking hands essentially is just a nonverbal use of hand signals. I've experienced that at a really deep level. 
I've, I've um, also flags and things of that nature. Um, my, my, um, what I'd like though, in my reading here, there was a couple of uh, little outlined points that I think would be awesome. Um, and and this, it also brings up a couple topics that may ring some bells for, and whistles for some of us on the call. Um, it's, uh, it says, strangely, the sense of smell can also be used to detect police flags. Police and those affiliated with them often wear noticeably excessive scents, cologne or perfume, to identify themselves to others in the know, and also possibly to give the target a subliminal sense of being stalked. Used in this way, it is a subtle form of torture. In the former case, it is especially useful if the agent is displaying no other noticeable forms of trade craft. As a side note, alcoholics and heavy smokers also have been known to do this, but only if they still have to function in society and have to have frequent contact with the public. It goes on to say, it has been my experience that the majority of these who go deep in terms of penetrating an organization or insinuating themselves into a trust of a specific individual or smokers. I like to smoke. But this can be compared to a poker player who smokes to cover a tail. A tail is a facial or behavioral giveaway that informs the other players as to what cards he may be holding. Also, part of this profile is that such individuals are also highly social. You will rarely, if ever, encounter such an individual who is a lone wolf. Solitude as a behavioral characteristic is simply not compatible with the requ requirements of espionage in general. And um, so it says, once you've identified a UC cop or civilian police spy, observe who they associate with in the network will unfold before your eyes. These are the infiltrators and saboteurs, the ones you must remove from your organization and warn others about. It This goes on and on, but I really felt that was important because I'd love for people to latch on to this article here and get mm -hmm. knowledge about it so that they can just be aware of who it is and um, help be able to tailor it to them because we all have our own specific um, correlations to it. Everybody's story here is different, different alone. Emily, what's your story? Um, <laughs> I'm on the spot now. Okay. Um, so I started, it started when I was in Mankato, which is maybe 45 minutes away from where I'm at now. Um, well, I should say that's when I started noticing it. I'm sure it was going on before that. Um, it's kind of a long story, but to put it short, um, the person, like my boyfriend at the time and his friends pretty much left me in a blizzard and like as I was walking to find a phone that I could use to call and get a ride back home, uh, there were people whistling. Everybody was wearing sunglasses. This is towards the evening, you know. It's there's nobody wearing sunglasses like that. Um, and then FedEx trucks. Like one of my finally did manage to get into a building that actually did let me use their phone. Um, mm -hmm. I was able to get a hold of my mom and she came and picked me up and on the way back we got followed by like three or four different vehicles and one of them was a FedEx truck and it followed us the whole way there and like mom didn't notice anything and honestly like even the radio was playing weird songs and I can't remember them now because I was in such a like mid freak out because of all this insane stuff just started happening out of nowhere. There were subtle hints beforehand like there was one movie I had at home and I only had the second part to it and then my boyfriend there in town was like oh hey we got this movie but we've only got the second part we don't have the first part and I had just had that conversation maybe a week ago with another friend of mine um so it was subtle stuff here and there and I knew something was going on but I wasn't really aware how bad it was until shit really just hit the fan 
Uh, we actually went to a casino before they left me there. Before uh, we went to a casino, and even in the casino, like I was going into the bathroom, and there's two security guards in the bathroom too. Um, you know, talking and just like eyeing me the whole time, wearing sunglasses again indoors. Uh, everywhere I went was insanely crowded for a month, a good month after that, and I just stopped going out of the house. Um, like, like I said, sunglasses were the biggest thing, and then FedEx trucks. I have the same thing with me, let me tell you, with the FedEx and the sunglasses. Those were two that um, I've also noticed. Mm-hmm. And I have and, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of differences, but there's a lot of similarities too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. And that that article will point out for many people across the board will actually be able to see identifiable markers that can relate. You know, yours is. I just related best. way when you said FedEx, I got triggered. And sunglasses, because I always notice with the sunglasses and the FedEx trucks. Mm. Just curious, do you, are there weird noises when people in FedEx uniforms walk by you too? Like it's a beeping, it's a two-tone beep when they walk by the, me, and then it'll do it again. I always just see them. Like I could go out right now, I swear to God, and smoke a cigarette, and I'm gonna see a fucking FedEx. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I thought I should go smoke a cigarette right now. <laughs> I wish you could be on video. I'd be like, Mom, <laughs> I feel you, girl. Damn FedEx. Yeah. And the sunglasses. <laughs> Those are two that, yeah, yeah, I definitely see two. Mm-hmm. I told me the other day at a job I was doing, he goes, have you noticed they all wear dark sunglasses? And I started laughing and I go, I kind of blew him off. I wish I would have talked to this guy a bit more, but I was working, so I had to stop. You know, I, I was on a break, and I was talking to him. I, of course, I, I had a commitment at that moment, so I had to get back to work. And I cut mm-hmm. the guy short, but I promise I wish I had talked to that guy more. He was throwing things on me because you do know that these street talks and, you know, that people have been out here and their stories about you, and, you know, he was telling me different things. and. Um, and, um, you know, quite frankly, I see these things, too, the, the different. I'm so glad you said FedEx, though, because. Yeah, you know, I've, never made, I've never heard anybody mention that, and that totally triggered something in me, like, oh, my God, I've seen that, too. And I always feel the energy from the FedEx. Yeah. Well, me, I had an AT&T truck sitting out here. FedEx had delivered a package to someone earlier in the day. I seen them in the back of the building later on in the day, but I had had AT and T out in the front of the building, and there was a ringing that would not stop. It was right out of the like window. Like a fax machine. Oh my gosh! For five, six hours straight, I had to put my earphones in and put a video on because it was so intense. It was too much. Mm-hmm. Wow! Mm-hmm. I just got mine so- motherfucking blown, y'all. I'm just curious, where are y'all from? Statewide. I'm Indiana originally. I'm out in LA at the current current time, and this is Carmen. Mm-hmm. And Andrea from Georgia. And I'm from Minnesota. Minnesota. Aww. <laughs> People from Minnesota are so sweet. <laughs> I was just in Minnesota. What happened? I love Minnesotians. What, Minnesotians? How do you say that? Minnesotans? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> That's exactly what they're saying right now, too. Minnesota. <laughs> My boyfriend Charles is uh, from, well, uh, a couple of different places, but he, he was born in Maryland there and lived in Maryland for quite a few years and even when and we met like under weird circumstances and we met the carnival because I took off and jumped a carnival at one point and a carnival by the way take yeah taking off and going to different states and stuff it don't change shit so you still get stopped no matter where you go even if you move states yeah I moved to Oklahoma with my aunt I after that I moved to Kansas City Missouri and then no. came back up here. Do you think here. the gang stalking took a while to, like, set up when you moved, or was it instant? It took a while at first. Well, okay, it took a while in Oklahoma. It was a 
probably about a month, and then, like, the bus would be – normally this bus that I take would only have, you know, five or six other people. And uh-huh. then this one time I took that bus, and the entire bus was full except for one seat. And, like, there was tons of street theater. I, I couldn't even listen to it all. There was that much of it going on. And then um, in Kansas City – Kansas City, it did not take as long, but it still took a little while. And then um, and that was there were thousands of people involved in that one. Like they were following me to, like so it was uh, even more in Kansas City. Kitchens. Think? Oh yeah, it was horrible in Kansas City, but it's a bigger city. I'm from okay. a pretty small town. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's a huge city. So it's there, not there as bad in small towns. That's what I'm um, realizing too. I just moved from like Atlanta to you know, the country, Milledgeville, Georgia. So it's not as bad. I still see it, but it's not anything like yeah. Atlanta. Right. They don't have the people, you know. Um, and then with the carnival, it took the longest probably because we're constantly moving. And then there was uh, one town. Hold on one moment. Hey, Charles. Remember that town we were at where everybody got fired at when we were at the fun house and there was like 20 people standing across? <laughs> from us? That just sounds funny. What town was that? Or what state was it? What, Alabama, Louisiana? Hey, isn't that your husband? Yeah. Isn't that your husband? You should bring him on. He's my fiance. Um, yeah. Hold on a second. I'll put you on speaker. Um, yeah. Uh oh, you gotta walk. You have to ask him first. <laughs> hey, Emily. Emily. Yeah. Emily. Yes. Hey, I'm broke. I'm broke, right? And I need funds. We need funds right now. Me and uh, Rachel. She, Rachel just got off. So me and Rachel are trying to hustle up some funds right now, some emergency funds to get other people out here. And mm-hmm. I know your husband or your boyfriend or whatever. You guys were. Ta- you guys were listening to what we were saying earlier when I talked yes. to you the other night on here. And I'm trying to get you, like, I'm trying to get him on here with you so he can see what's going on, you know? Yeah, I will. Because right now it's uh, open just discussion. Got, he we just got, got off work. work. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah, he just walked in the door, but I'll, uh, he just throw you on the speaker. Uh, or... give, him a give him a beer or something for us. <laughs> yeah. yeah you, you haven't <laughs> been on him a minute. I know how that is. I don't have a whole lot of time. I haven't been on in a couple days. What's that fucking echo? Whose phone is that? Yeah, I hear the echo too. Yeah, who the fuck? Who is that? I don't know. Is it me? Yeah, I don't know. Is it me? Is it me? Yeah. Um, oh, my phone's tripping. It's but, my phone. But hey, but you haven't been on here in a couple of days. And right now, I've been putting some work in to get people together, and mm-hmm. we're going, like, basically, we're going to meet up and chill and everything like that right here in Michigan, and Rachel's on her way out here, and I'm speaking to a lot of different people right now, like, Carmen just got on here, Carmen just got on here just for the first time today, um, uh, then there's a few other people in the area, in the Midwest, I know, where you say we're, Milwaukee or Minnesota? Minnesota. 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 Okay. All right. And so there's there's like a few other people that are working their way towards coming out here. Andrea isn't one of them, but there's people coming out here, and like we said, there's people that are suicidal. They're going psychotic. They're not right in their mind. And just like I spend hundreds of hours talking to people on the phone about what's going on, or bringing people together in person. And like there's you know, and so like I want your husband, you and your husband to, to you know come on together sometime because. You know your fiance, because remember you said yeah. you're gonna be, you want to, right, support the cause. Yeah, no, I definitely do. Um, do you want to jump in on this call now? Like I can give you the, can I give him the number in the pin? Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, give him the number in the pin. I would love okay, to no, know how like an outsider feels about being with account, somebody so. who's a targeted individual. Yeah, yeah you hold on one like, second. I'm gonna look up the number really quick. Hold on. <laughs> Except for, um, are you single too, Jamil? All right, whenever you're ready, I'll give you the number. Jamil, are you single? Huh? Like, you ain't got a family. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to talk, it's cool. They're, they're curious to see how somebody... You don't want to get a girlfriend who's going to put somebody in the situation. You're not ready I to put a ring on it. That's problem too. Um, seven no, zero. hell no. Not in this situation. Not like that. It's getting stalked. Not in this situation. That's why right. I'd like to know is like how somebody who's not gang stalked, that's you know with somebody who's a targeted individual, like what it's like for them. Call it and then I'll do the pin. You know what I mean? 
That's got to be hard. Well, it's not um, that bad now that we're back single? up here, but he noticed it a little bit. Hold on one second. You ready? So right. that he knows that you're being gang stalked three, and he supports six, you? One, nine. He knows, and he's seen a little bit of it. He's coming on now. Or does he just oh, think three, you're crazy? 03619. <laughs> oh, it loves you anyways. 03619, that's what I said, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what I said. All right. Well, oh, is he on? You're, yep. You're yep. He's in. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on? Actually, at the moment, hey. I'm trying to stop. <laughs> Forgive me. Oh, no. It's no problem. Yeah, your fiance, man, ha- has been very helpful, and she's been on here talking to the ladies. Like, there's a few women on here who are going through gang stalking and I know you guys are together Hello. and like we all want, yeah we all wanted to hear what it was like for you to know that your fiance was being gang stalked and like have you seen it how have you interpreted it and you know can you shed some light on that well it's it's, it's actually pretty it was it was actually pretty easy for me to, to realize it because I'm a person who's very well aware of my surroundings I've been like that ever since I was a kid uh I uh I had to keep an eye over my shoulder because I was one of those kids who, unfortunately, uh, got severely beaten by his father. So keeping keeping an eye on my surroundings and where people are at at all times is pretty much my thing. Um, and on top of that, too, I really don't want people behind me. So when I, so when I feel someone like behind me, like I, I get the shivers. So I move. I look. But when uh, there there were a few times actually when we'd be uh, sitting at the fun house and uh, actually in a quite different spot. and um, since I'm uh, since I had a front on one side of the fun house, she's on the other end towards the exit. I would uh I I would kind of, I keep an eye on her and the situations down there, and I'd keep an eye on the front of me. In the situation in front of me, and I'd also go on the outside, so towards the on the outside of the house, pretty much in like an eye of everything that's going on. And um, there were several times where we would have nobody there, but there would just be parents sitting in front and like shift eye towards her, like they would look right at her, and they would mumble some something to each other, and then they'd walk away. Um, and then uh, I think it was, it was one night actually. Uh, we sat, we both sat at the fun house. There was nothing going on, but there was a, a huge group of people actually walked past, stopped, came back, looked at, looked right at her, talked to each other, and then they kept moving. And it was kind of uh, like, and it was kind of like, what the hell is going on? So I, uh, so what I did was I have a for each, cause like each spot is like a week or two. So what I would do is keep a mental note of the faces that I've seen. And I would see the same face multiple times. Now, the same face multiple times would be wearing sunglasses or um, be wearing uh, red shoes or red shirt, and, or sometimes they'd come in. Sometimes they'd come in wearing all red or all black, red and black. Um, and then there was like several times actually uh, that I would see a UPS guy who just randomly walking around. No. Okay. Go ahead. Obviously, he's no. He noticed the color coding before I did, but that didn't hit. In the small town, that was just in certain spots. But you remember that one day when we walked from the house to the gas station and we were living at the old place? Oh yeah, with the uh, the several, the actually the three or four uh, you guys. No, no, no. When we were walking from the house to the gas station, it was like getting dark, and you're like the same vehicle has driven by us three fucking times. This is a block distance, yeah. by the way. It's one block. Away from the gas station. Yeah, um, it was like a silver. I want to say Impala. It looked like an Impala, or a BMW, one of the two. Um, yeah, we uh, it was it was, it was that, that was actually like maybe a five minute walk. 
No, he left the you house. He's cutting out. Is, is he cutting out for you guys, or is that just because I'm too close to him? He's cutting out for everybody, I think, because he's cutting out for me, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, it's cutting out. It's cutting out for me as well. Yeah, how about now? You sound better for me. Oh, it's probably because I have your speaker. Kind of like well, better off. It sounds a lot clearer, too. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that, that's because that's I took you out of the speaker, but usually in, like, a conference call, it, there's going to be an echo everywhere. Um, I can hear you better now, was, actually. Yeah, it was cutting out before, and, yeah. Like, we've already got the echo, but it was cutting out there. Um, well, like, well, like, as I was saying, though, like, it, this, this, this walk is maybe uh, less than 10 minutes, or even actually less than seven. Uh, it's just yeah, I was gonna say, this is the, from the old house to Clark. That's one and a half blocks. It's not, it's not even a ten minute walk. Um we stepped we stepped out of the uh the house and uh we looked across the street and there was a silver looks like BMW or whatever. And like at first we didn't pay at first I didn't pay any, any attention to it. Because it's I mean, it could be coincidence. They're getting ready to cross the street as we're getting ready to leave. You know, that can always happen. Right, you and didn't then, think uh, anything of it. Right. And then um, less than less than actually it was less than two minutes. Okay, me and her are walking down the sidewalk in less than two minutes. They're coming back around straight past us, and I'm like, okay, that that's just not right. So we kept on walking, and I just I was like, okay, if I see the, if I see this car again, obviously there's something going on because. You just don't see the same car three times in a row in a block and a half radius. That just doesn't make any sense. Right. And then, um, but I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't see them when we got to the gas station. But when we left the gas station, we we took the same route and we saw them. And then, right, we saw them again. And so that, so that worked. That that actually worried me enough to where. I when we got back into the house, I looked out of the front bay window, and I stayed. I, I stood there just to watch. I saw the vehicle go back past the house one more time. So and, I'm gonna go ahead and admit that I'm an asshole. He had no idea where gang stalking was. He didn't know what it. He had no idea. Yeah, right. right. I didn't either for a long time. Well, I didn't tell him until doing. like. Oh. Oh, so I just want your fiance to know. See, sir, what we're doing is I've been I've been helping people since uh, June of 2016 um, through courses, interviews, and courses. It had been going on for a year. It started in the summer of 2015. Then June of 2016, I just started approaching the people who were participating in it and talking to them. I started handwriting flyers and eventually typing up flyers, interviewing everybody I could, making YouTube videos about it. And now I've been doing this for two years. And I'm at the point now to where, like, I'm taking people off the grid and outside of society and taking them outside so they can hang out, go hiking, go camping, do healthy things. So suicide is no longer an option. So going out and violently hurting somebody is no longer an option. So people can come together and help people. And I talked to, I've, I've talked to over 100 different people getting gang stalked. And um, Emily is just, you know, one of those people. And uh, her story is not very different. Than a lot of other people's stories, you know, and you've seen it firsthand, so you know it's real. And so, like right now, I'm working on a money bomb for people. I tell people if they can donate one dollar, or five dollars, or ten dollars, or whatever. It's all gonna go to getting people together and getting people to do something healthy. I've had one person getting gang stalked come and meet me already, and it went pretty good. And I'm just staying focused to keep my eyes on the prize and try to help everybody I can. And people know they can call me 24/7 for like guidance and help and assistance. And right now, this isn't. Right now, we're just kind of talking. There's no structure to it. We're just kind of just messing around. But you came in at the right time, and you know we're we're just glad Emily can be here, and we're glad you can be here. And if there's anything you need from me, information or whatever, let me know, man. I can email it to you. I can email you the MK Ultra files. Anything you're interested in, and if there's anything you guys do that to support the Money Bomb or support um people coming together. Uh, as we've been doing it, you know, I mean, even a dollar would help, man. Just your intention and your w- goodwill to going towards it would help a lot. It would be saving lives. Well, we're already planning on it. At the very least, I am. I do get paid on Friday. I don't think I'll be able to make it because the 
place that I work at, I haven't been working there long enough to get any vacation time, and I only get the weekends off, usually. Um, tomorrow I have off because it's a holiday, but um, as far as getting up there, probably not going to be an option until it slows way the hell down, but that won't be until winter. Well, you're lucky. I'll work right. Yeah. But I get... But I do so get paid, do you get and I am planning on like at work because a lot I of us did. don't have jobs. But when we have had jobs, that happens. Right? Yeah. Um. Actually, I did, and now Charles has not seen any street theater. They will not do street theater if somebody else is with me. I have noticed that. Really? But so when it's I was only at when work, you're by yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um. Except for in Kansas City. In Kansas City, they did not give a fuck. In Kansas City, it was me and my friend Michelle, and they stalked us that entire like. It was bad. There was street theater. There was um, a lot of uh, sound sensitization, visual sensitization, um, not so much color coding, but again, with the sunglasses and the FedEx and security right. guards for whatever reason. Um, but at work, I did have a guy um, who came in who started, like, I was already suspicious because, like, the, the second, or the first or the second day that I was working there, we had a quote-unquote fire extinguisher inspector come in, and he was wearing, you know, the uniform, sunglasses indoors, and I work in a lab, so, like, the lighting is dim in certain places because you have to have it that way. For certain right, chemicals so it wouldn't make sense like to have somebody with sunglasses inside, right? Right, and he was eyeing me the entire time that he was there, like waiting for me to respond. But at this point, I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm tired of running, This is not. I'm not leaving this job for this shit. So I stayed. And then the day after that, a new guy started. And he, um, it wasn't, I want to say it was maybe a week later, he, he brought somebody in, and I knew that it wasn't the girl that normally comes in, like, she, I see her all the time. Like I know exactly what she looks like. This girl looked really darn close, except the hair was just too dark. It was more brown than red. And the other girl is definitely a red. And they went back and forth with a conversation that Charles and I had had maybe a week or so prior to that, just just to make sure that I was that I knew what was going on. And I'm still refusing to leave. Well, ever since I did that interview with you, Jamil, um. I have not had even vehicles at this point. Like during that interview, there was there was four red cars that drove by or whatever. But since then, I, there's been nothing. And that guy got fired. Wow. That's like I just bad. found out today, he got fired. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah. <laughs> that's good news, right? <laughs> right. So like, and there yeah. were, just, yeah, there is one other that I've like kind of suspicious on, but I'm not going to mention anything about that person because I don't want anyone to know that I know that that person's probably involved. I'm going to wait and let you hit the fan so that it doesn't bother me when she does do what she's going to do. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that other dude got fired and I haven't had any issues since the interview with you, so I don't know if it has totally stopped. or if, But, like, ever since I've been back, though, it hasn't been a daily thing like it was at first. That's great. So, yeah, I don't know if the they stopped because now I finally know what the fuck it's called and what's going on. This has been going on for almost or a little over two yeah, years. Yeah, now they're probably scared. Right. Um, like that guy at work, I actually called him out on it one day. Um, he was complaining. He was like, God, I don't get paid enough for this shit. I'm like, Oh, but you get paid enough to follow me on your other job, on your side job, right? And he said, <laughs> He called his ass out. I love it. Yeah, he goes, oh, yeah, and the look on his face when he realized what he just said yes to, like, he definitely didn't oh, need to Freudian say it. His eyes got slip. huge. Don't you love them? <laughs> yeah. Gotta love the he, Freudian slip. <laughs> his eyes got wide, his jaw dropped, and he went and sat down at the table, and he's sitting there tapping <laughs> his legs and texting furiously. I have never uh-huh. seen anybody text that fast in my life. And, like, my <laughs> nephews are in their team, so you know they're quick at it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and yeah, after that, like, he pretty much avoided me there at work for the longest time, and then, like I said, just today, he totally got fired, gone. Wow. Charm is a bitch. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, Um, yeah, yeah. so what do you... Okay, I've got about 15 more minutes yet, and then I have to go, because I'm... uh, there's a place like a few towns over that does fireworks early, so I'm taking. I'm going with my nephew to go see those oh, things. Oh, that's so. awesome! I hope you have fun. Oh, I will. 
if you guys have a good fourth too. And I'm sorry, did I, Charles? I, did I, I totally interrupted you with that whole thing there, didn't I? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. But, so you guys don't. None of you guys have been able to work. Like the other places that I've worked at, like I've had to quit, except for at the carnival because the carnival is a little bit different. Nobody gives a flying fuck, and nobody's gonna join in on that because once you're in the carnival, you're kind <laughs> so of <long> in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, but normal jobs, like before I got in with the car to like other places that I had tried to work, I tried to get a job at Burger King. That was a mistake. Just when I went in to go grab the application. What's like, up with the Burger was... King? <laughs> I don't know. That Even when I got into town here, Charles, you remember when we first got back, I wanted to go to um, that motel that was close by Marcy's? Uh-huh. All right. Well, when what I didn't tell you, do you remember how we had chicken chow mein? The one that what I didn't tell you is when I brought that application back in. Somebody else had chicken chow mein, and they purposely made sure that they br- came in and put it on the counter when I came in there to bring my application back. Huh. I believe it. Yeah, she had sunglasses, too. Just saying. I believe it. <laughs> it's like, uh-huh. This is before, yeah, this, I, I, just, I maybe discovered what gang stalking actually was. Um, gosh, I started talking to you, Jamil, like, right after I figured it out. It hasn't even been a month yet, I don't think. Like, well, I didn't so know the name for it. It's new to you. It's like yeah, a well, mind all this crazy... confusion stage. Well, I'm finally out of it. Like, I, as soon as I figured out what, like, found what gang stalking was through a friend of mine, like, everything made sense. I already knew that right. there was something everything going on. Everything made it was a big sense operation. after you figured it out. It's kind of comforting. It's like, thank God I'm not crazy. They're right. fucking crazy. I'm not the well, crazy one. Yeah. Here, 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 Good here's for the, you. Here's, here's the wonderful thing about that, though. She she's with someone who like knows his surroundings no matter where I go. I mean, yeah, I, I, can, I, I, can, I, I don't I mean go. to say that I I don't mean to say that I didn't know that it was happening. I knew I was being gang stalked. I just didn't know what the fuck it was called. Like, that's holy awesome shit, that my you ex-in... have a man that's gonna right, support right. you and yeah, not call yeah. you crazy. And you know what I'm saying? Like that's a beautiful thing. That's well, awesome. That, I got really, really lucky, and I didn't even want yeah, nothing to do with Yeah, you are lucky. That first. That's awesome. <laughs> See, when, like when, like when she, when she, when she told me exactly what it was, I, like I, I, I immediately started started putting the pieces together. Like, oh, so mm-hmm. that time when we were walking up to Hardy's, that that's what that was, or you know, yeah. Once you, yep. Sorry. And um It all makes like, sense. Once you the more you learn, the more it makes sense. Mhm. And yeah. you know, and now and not now 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 that I actually know what you know what it is and what people are actually doing, I pay right. more attention. And I I I, good, I have good. I have like when when you me and, when and her were at the movie theaters. When me and her at the movie theaters uh, a couple weeks ago, um I did. I did see people come up, you know, with sunglasses on, but the sun, yeah. the sun was just like going down. So like, mm-hmm. there's no reason that you really need sunglasses. You can see, you know. Yeah. And with um. Just being. Sorry. So I. So like, let, let him. Let, I, I think we should let let him finish. Let the man, let the man say what he has to say, and please yeah. nobody interrupt. Let's, That's why right. I said sorry. Everybody. <laughs> I, sorry. Like. Like Emily, Emily had just looked towards him in a different direction, like she didn't see him. I looked over at him and I gave him the sternest look I can give him, and he turned around and walked the opposite direction. Like, Good. if you like, if, if like if you like she like she told me her triggers, you know. No, like, it was before we knew what gang stalking was actually called, though, when this happened, like I I didn't want to tell him what was going on because I I. You didn't I want to sound know. crazy. Yeah. I get it. You can't, I get you can't, it. You can't, you, can't, you, can't be, you can't be a closed-minded, uh, closed-minded person in the world that's pretty much closed-minded itself. It's, it's, it's that's all. good that oh. you think that way. Wait a minute. So I, if I heard this correctly. Emily, you said I, I'm sorry, sir. What is your name again? Uh, Charles. Charles. Um, you said that you didn't actually tell him what was going on. He actually picked up on it. Exactly. That's what I was just gonna say. Is like you can feel their energy, can't you? What... Always. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I know it's my, evil I, I know energy. You can feel it. Yeah. It's negative, like fight or flight. Like, oh, something's wrong, right? You can no, feel no, that no. stuff. There, there, there's no fight or flight here. It's more of just, I see what you're doing. I know what you're doing. Cut That's good. I'm glad that you know. That's comforting. That's awesome. Did you 
for the sake of, I wonder, and Charles, when you were witnessing this, she didn't tell you, so did you know that she knew? Or, and, and then how did, how were you able to address it? Because how do you know that she wasn't like some murderer or serial killer and had done something crazy a long time ago and her past was coming back to haunt her? I mean, what were your thoughts and how did you address that with her? Well, why why would he why would that mean she was a, a killer or something in her past? No, I don't get like what do you mean? I don't get that. What do you mean by that? Well, the smear campaign, he may have been like told that shit. Right. Well, you don't you don't what I mean is so people come with a past and you know, she could have been if I'm just saying that how did he not think that there could have been something else from her past that came up. I wasn't natural, you know. I'm trying. I just threw something out be, there be, because pe- pe- yes, people who have done people who have done who have done done things like that in their past, they 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 still carry a look of uh, sorrow on thought. their face. I'll be right back. The look of sorrow, so you could see it in their eyes. I could see it in that. She didn't. She didn't have that. On on on. On on top on top of that too, I I grew up in an area which was good at first, and then right about 2010, it went straight to crap. So I okay. I, 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 I so you've I mean, been I mean, through trauma too. Well, yeah, I I I, oh, I, 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 grew, so I grew, you know. grew up in a I grew up in an area where there was like three different gangs all in that same area, and they were, they were constantly battling all the time. So I, right. I, 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 I hate I to interrupt, but our ride is about to get here. We're going to go take my nephew to the fireworks. Charles, I know you're already pretty much ready. i got to change and everything, so I'm going to end the call, but keep going. Um, well, Emily, it was so nice to meet you. And okay, you. Emily. Yeah, Emily. I'll, yeah, Emily, we look forward to having you on again, especially you and Charles. You know, together, it's wonderful. Yeah. Awesome. It is. It is. Y'all have a good night, and um, yes, night. I definitely want have to do fun. this again. Yeah, I will. Um, I okay. do have tomorrow off. I don't know if y'all are busy, but we'll figure it out. But like, yeah, hit me like, up. I'm so glad I got to meet you. Well, nice to meet you guys to too. Meet you too. <laughs> All right, I'll catch y'all later. Bye. See you. Bye. I probably or did, need or, to. Or, or, or did you guys want me to keep going? Or? No, go for it. Yeah, yeah, keep going, what... man. Um, like, well, like her, 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 her past didn't really bother me because we, we pretty much explained, we, we pretty much gave each other our full, full depth of our past anyway. So, like, okay. any, 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 anything, anything that happened in her past doesn't really bother me. That I can handle. I, I, I grew, like I said, I grew up, I grew up in a, an area in which there were three games always battling. So I, I, I know, I know. I know when something is completely off or if something, you know, like there's a miss, but you know it's right. been hidden. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll keep on pressing if that's the case. Or, I, or, and, um, and um, yeah, she let me. She also let me know through video as well um, about some of the things in the past, or the gang, the gang stalking in the video. Yeah. <laughs> Why I wanted yeah. to and just she, 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 she actually showed me your videos. Uh, if I can remember. Uh, me? Again. Yes. Jamil? Jamil. Jamil. Yeah. She showed me your videos. She showed me your video. And I was, I was, I was oh, actually, really? at, yeah, that, okay. at, at that time too, I was, I was still processing a lot from, cause I, I'm, I'm also, I'm also becoming an assistant manager. So I'm, I'm still processing all of that plus what I got to do at my job as well. Um, right. That's a lot. right. But like how how I noticed it was when when someone someone's clearly up to like zero good, their their mannerisms and their actions show for themselves. They they can appear normal. But when but when but if you take a closer look, like let's like let's let's say right now that since I'm looking out the window and Someone, someone out by the road stops, looks at the house, and then keeps walking. It's kind of like, okay, you're one of the ones I gotta look out for. So, I'm, so in my head, I'm taking a mental picture of exactly what what you're wearing at this time. Your face, although you're wearing sunglasses, your face, your hair, and your build. 
I'm keeping a mental I'm keeping keep a mental picture of this. Now, let's say, you know, I cross this person on the street. I'm not necessarily going I'm not necessarily gonna say the thing up front, but I am I am getting a better, clear picture of exactly who you are. So if I see you again out front of my house, I'm gonna be the one to step out the door and I'm gonna stare at you. If you walk away, we're good because I know you're not coming back. But if you come back again, there's gonna be a verbal confront uh, confronting, and I'm not afraid to do it. I have I have done this multiple times uh, back at home where I grew up because, well, you're 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 in a you're in a place where people are trying to recruit you for their gang. It's kind of like no, sorry, we're not doing this, you know. Yeah, stand your ground. Okay, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. I was asking Carmen. The only reason why I was asking you on Charles's question was because see, I'm a single female, and then I did get into a relationship, and um, it was with a friend of mine that I'd had for 26 years that was really good to me, and I confided yeah. in this friend of these issues, and then after I confided in him, he connected to the network and proceeded to sabotage my life. He beat me, stole my mail. Oh my you know, God. So, um, he set me up for them to, um, I escaped. I don't know what was the plan for them to do in the end, but this was on multiple occasions. So it got worse over time. I didn't know that he, you know, there was things plotted like being robbed and stuff stolen. My computer was broken. It was all blamed on outside sources. And then with me not, you know, certain scenarios where I wouldn't be around and I could say, well, I know he isn't stealing my clothes because he's a man and the clothes aren't in the house. So it was like, oh, you weren't at home. So, you know, somebody else stole the clothes. And of course I would be gone, obviously. But, um, and then that would be his excuse too. He was gone. He didn't know. But all in the end, that he was on their team and um, that was horrible. But it came about because he beat me, and um, I guess, you know, I came into the relationship trusting that just that I could confide in this guy. Of course, I'd known him 26 years. I would have never fathomed that this person would have been the type of person that would say, you know, yeah, let's be in a relationship and then be getting paid from the opposition to destroy my entire life. I mean, and that's how right. across the But for yeah. others that realize that there is a sabotaging that's out there taking place, it's really hard. I mean, I don't trust people. I don't trust my own family. I don't really, I don't trust anyone. So The sad thing is, is whatever you care about, whatever is the most important in your heart is what they will try and destroy and take away from you. That's the saddest part of this program. Yeah, so and, and, you, like you, and here, you, I'm sorry. And the and here here here's here's the thing about that and probably my phone dialing number. I'm I'm gonna give you an insight on the, exactly how my mind is. I am going to live my life. I I just give me like I'm like five minutes. Just 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 tell them I'm looking for a different shirt because I'm about to do it anyway. Um, my my mind. Feel you. My mindset is like I'm gonna live my life according to how I want to. I'm not gonna let you or anybody else tell me different or make me do anything different. Now, yes, I do have an open mind as to anything into the world. I I make I make decisions upon what I see, what I hear, and it's uh, it's, it's basically up to me to decide whether or not this is a good this is a good thing or this is not a good thing, and I'm. And I'm always going to live and abide by that because the decisions that I make are mine and mine alone. If I make a mistake, it's still my mis- it's my mistake. It's my mess to clean up. If I don't if I don't make a mistake, then kudos. I'm gonna keep pushing, and I'm not gonna let anybody deter me from my from my goal. So, in other words, if you want if you want to live your life, period, you know, free of crap, then <laughs> it's, you shouldn't. You shouldn't side deter you from you know meeting your goal as to living your your life as a person or with anybody and on top on top of that too it's 
I, 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 if, I, if I'm going to be with someone, I, I'd rather be with someone who's going to treat me the way I would, I, well, the way I would, I would treat anybody else, you know? Good love. So that, that, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. I, I don't that's know wonderful, man. Love. Absolutely. Um, you, for you, you foresee, that. yeah, thank you for sharing that. Do you foresee a time, like, have you ever worried about yourself getting I'll gangs on because of? Oh, if, if, if it ever happens to me, um, I'll, I'll, I'll be aware of it, and they'll, they'll be the ones to be, well, hurting because they can't bother me. They will never be able Did to you bother you already me. know. Right. You already right. know their game. You're already two steps no, ahead. Don't. Um, yeah, that's wonderful. But I got, I got, I gotta go because we gotta go and have some fun. Well, thank you. Yeah, have fun. Yeah. Well, and Charles, you. hey, Charles. Yes. Uh, Charles, your um, your fiance Emily, she has my number. So if you if you want to call me yourself, man, you, she got my number. So don't be, don't ever hesitate to reach out. No problem. Okay. All right. Well. Yeah. Have a good night. Uh, you uh, you guys you guys do too. And remember, you are your own person. Don't let these guys mess with you. That's beautiful. All right. All right. Great, great Thanks, advice. Charles. Thank you. Charles. No problem. All right. Bye-bye. Do you have bug spray? I do not. Wow, wasn't that wonderful? I loved it. It's really yeah, cool to have like... somebody else's view that has, you know, um, lived with somebody who's gone through this. That's right. willing to talk about right. it. Right. So, yeah, that, so yeah, that was... had it through colors by saying, well, how do you know she wasn't a killer? And I just, it was funny. He said, well, what the heck made you think that? And, and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I should have just said, uh, how do you know she doesn't have a past and that, you know, people aren't, whatever's going on, it may not be a, a dot. Our, our world is so crazy. So I guess I don't know the wording that I'm thinking because we live in a society today that you don't know if, you know, Mojo, Jojo over there is the cartel snitch of the century and now the car- drug cartel is coming to kill him. So you still want to say. <laughs> yeah. I, right. Never right. Hey, we're we're approaching we're approaching four hours right now. And wow. So, um Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I just kinda wanted wanted to um say that uh you know, we covered like a lot of different stuff and I I'm think break we this down. covered almost everything. <laughs> Your listeners should know right. all about gang stalking after this shit. Right, absolutely, absolutely. And so, you know, um, Andrea, thanks so much. And, you know, thank you too, Rachel. Yeah, I enjoyed and, it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, Rachel, we're going to have to network. I mean, depending on what your intentions are, I know you said you were coming out to the Midwest. And so, you know, depending, like, you're always welcome to come in and talk every t- anytime there's a conference. And now you and Andrea have each other's phone numbers so you can call upon each other for support or whatever. And, you know, if you do want to come and meet up with the group, the people that are coming together here in Michigan in person, you know, you're more than welcome. And, you know, you said you're going to be here going to where you're going on the 10th and all that. So, you know, just just let me know what's up and just keep in touch. And, you know, if you don't exactly see eye to eye on, on, you know, the idea of going hiking and camping and getting off the grid type of thing, that's cool. But if you if you want to shed some insight on some stuff you might want to do, just you – you know, if you want to, like, maybe if you just want to meet and hang out first and and, not, and decide what you want to do, then that's cool, too. Like, just, you know, just keep me posted. And because there's a lot of different people. Carmen? Or you talk, you said, you said uh, Rachel, so were, were you meaning Carmen? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, Carmen. Carmen. I'm sorry, Carmen. Just want to be sure. Rachel's not on the line anymore. I mean, Carmen. I got you. <laughs> Right, right. So, you know, just keep me posted on, on what, what's going on with you. And, you know, if you do want to come in, and you'll, you will be closer to Michigan. So if you do want to come in and, and hang out and go with us and stuff, you're more than welcome. But if not, you you know, you can just keep coming back, you know, and 
on the conference line if you want to as well. So either way. So are you still going to set up um, the people in the area and see if we would, you know, like to see if we could do a um, a meetup before you have to leave on the 10th? I was aiming, you know, to leave before, just before then, if we can uh, coordinate something. Fired well, I, 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 all I'm all I'm gonna do I, I, all I'm gonna do is talk to a few different people who live in your area and see you know if they would be willing to to meet up with somebody else and get involved because I don't you I never really arranged officially arranged a meetup between people who get gang stalked and so all I would do is bring you on a three-way I'm sure call. I'm sure they would be down. Okay, I, yeah, I, well, you know, they, they I'm, may, just, you, you, I'm just see, letting you know. People, and I'm, I'm not a match doc. I'm not a ma I don't. I'm not a match doctor. You know what I mean? I'm not a match doctor. And these are people. Let, let me finish. Let Let me speak for a minute, please. I'm not a match doctor, and these aren't people that I know personally in person. And so, you know, this would be your responsibility to co-create the situation with them to meet in person. All I can do is bring you on a three-way with the person, and you can feel them out. And then, if you guys wanted to do something else outside of the phone call, that's on you. But I'm not going to be responsible of whatever comes out of it. So if you don't get along with the person or if something happens, I'm not, you know what I mean? These are people that I don't know. I have not met in person. So this is not, this is not, this is not my meet. Like whatever you would be doing with these people, it's not going to be affiliated with me directly. I'm just showing you the people. And then if you want to meet up with them and go to the beach or whatever, like that's, you know, that's your group. That's I what, think you know, with your intuition and your empathic abilities, though, you'll instantly be able to know. If well, somebody... I don't, I don't want to be, yeah, yeah, but you know, right. I, I'm not going to be responsible. Right, I'm, I'm just be, saying. Yeah. Yeah. If, if Carmen has a bad experience or something, I'm, I don't want to be held responsible for that. You know, cause these are people that I have not met in person. Yeah. I don't know I get them it. like that. I just, I just know them from calling me for help. You know, I do, I do the stuff on my phone that I've been doing for years with people and I'm bringing people together here to, to meet up and hang out and do the off the grid thing. But if Carmen is interested in other people in her area, I can bring her together. I can bring you together on three way with them, Carmen. And then you can talk to them, and then you can decide what's appropriate for you and them if you think you want to meet them. But I don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's not going to have right. any direct. Uh, it's not somebody you know, you know for a year and you can recommend. What I was thinking yeah, I, was, I, out, right? I can write a brief introductory email for me to to you really quick for them people. If you would just, you can say, hey, I spoke to this girl. Um, her name's Carmen. She's in the area. She wanted to, you know, meet up, and then just give them through my email, and then I can I can take care of the rest. Which that's presumably what I would have done in the begin with. I I did not expect you to coordinate anything outside of because you've already spoken with like-minded individuals, and I'm on a time crunch. I was just proposing. I decided I could propose to shoot you an email with a brief introductory of me and, you know, why they could contact me. I, I'm not, I, you know, I, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call, uh, what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call the people and ask and, and let them know what's going okay. on, that there's somebody in the area that would be interested in talking to them. And I'm going to see okay. what they have to say. If, they're, if they are interested, if, if they are interested, then, you know, they might, you know, they, they might say, okay, they're, they're interested in introductory email. But I'd be like, just put put you on three way with them. Let you talk to them directly. Then you can email them whatever you want after that. You guys can exchange emails and all that stuff. And and you know, because I all right, well, I don't yeah. you know what I mean. I don't I don't I don't want to be a middleman for I because I don't know you know I just want you guys I just want right. everybody to like. Instead of you wasting your time, you could just attach it to the four or five people if you have their email addresses and say, hey, this was a girl. That was proposing to do this. Um, I don't do that. I'm not. I'm not about to attach her to four or five people's email addresses that I haven't even talked to first. These are people that I don't know personally. I know them from talking to them on the phone. I'm gonna call them and talk to them. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call them and talk to them over the phone. Like I have. I don't do that. I don't just link people up who who are being gang stalked. Like these people contacted me to talk to me. You know what I'm saying? I I run I run educational courses. I run You're educational saying. courses. And I, I run educational courses, and I run counseling. And these people contacted me to speak to me. So I'm not about to just start forwarding emails to them. I don't know Carmen, and I don't. I've never met Carmen. 
I don't know I don't know her well enough to to vouch for her, and I don't know these people well enough to vouch for them. These are people who just email me for help, so I'm not about to just randomly start sending out emails to people. It, 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 like that, that's me putting my name on it. And it's no disrespect to you, Carmen, but I don't know you that well. Today, today is the first day I spoke to you, so I'm not about to start forwarding your email to people, and I don't know enough about you. I can put you on three-way with people, and I'm going to let people know, like the understanding is I'm going to let them know, I just talked to Carmen over the phone. We did an interview. She seems like a really nice woman. She's being gang stalked, and, you know, we can do it like that, and I'll say whatever comes out of this is on you and them. But I don't do that. I'm not a match doctor. I don't just start forwarding emails to people that, of people I don't know and stuff. I don't do that. Awesome. However, you feel comfortable. Right. Right. And so. Right. But. Um. But that's you know that's that's. But that's it right there. So. Did you have you guys want to say anything? I mean, you guys have anything else? Because we're going on four hours, and I'm about to close this down. I mean, if you guys don't want to add anything. I'm good. <laughs> hey, thank you for the time. It was awesome. I'm glad I can contribute anything. And um, for sure. For sure. Uh, keep doing what you do. Right, right. Okay. Well, I'll, t I'll talk to both of you later. Andrea, All right. You guys Andrea. have a good night. Okay. You too. Thank you.